So now here we are looking at inelastic scattering. Remember, elastic scattering, the neutron came in and it interacted and it imparted some of its energy to the water molecule. I'll use water again in this case. Here's a hydrogen. Hydrogen. Let me go ahead and get my oxygen in there. There's an oxygen. Represents H2O. You can see that. Two H's and an oxygen. Two hydrogen and oxygen. If this neutron comes in and interacts with the water molecule, it will impart some energy to the water. It will then leave with a lower energy level, exactly like elastic scattering so far, but if a gamma is released during this event, now that gamma is energy, free energy. Where did it come from? Well, it came from the scattering event, which means that even though this has a lower kinetic energy than it started with, and this has a higher kinetic energy than it started with, these two energies do not equal the initial energy. Energy was not conserved because some of it left in the form of a gamma. Some of the energy left in the form of a gamma. That's the difference between an elastic and inelastic scattering event. Here, energy is not conserved. Energy not conserved. However, in elastic scattering, energy is conserved. That's the big difference. So those are the two scattering events. And remember, when we were talking about scattering, there was only two possibilities of scatter, elastic or inelastic. And you will see that I'm talking about scattering in water. Pretty cool. This is exactly how we're going to lower the energy level of our neutrons, through scattering reactions, taking it from this place that we defined as a high energy, 3 million electron volts, down to here, and we put the target area, target area. Remember, we started out here in a fast energy spectrum, greater than 0.1 MeV, right? And the, and the neutrons were right here when they were born. Here's the neutrons. And I needed to get the target area up here to increase the probability. And there was another area here. Here was one electron volt. So if I was less than one, I was slow. Here's fast. So what you can see is how am I going to get to a lower energy level and increase the target area because as you do this, as you lower the energy level of the neutron, the result is this. You increase the target area, increasing the probability. And we're going to do this function of getting this neutron from a high energy state to a low energy state so that we can increase the target area, increase the probability of an interaction by scattering events in the water. Pretty cool. Let's see, the, that's scattering events. Let's look at our capture events. Now, when we said, okay, the total probability of an interaction measured in barns, where a barn was one times 10 to the minus 24th centimeters squared, we knew that it was broken down into absorption reactions and scattering reactions, and we've looked at the difference between an elastic scattering event and an inelastic scattering event, right? Here we said energy is conserved, and here we said energy is not conserved. Now let's look at the two absorption possibilities. We said there's a probability, a microscopic cross-sectional area, a probability, a target area, that fission will occur, or that capture, and that capture is called radiative capture. And that's going to be a, a nemesis of ours that we have to look at. Radiative capture. But here, on the right-hand side, under, figure, under section 4.3.3, absorption reactions are discussed. And it says, most absorption re reactions result in the loss of a neutron coupled with the production of a charged particle or a gamma ray. We'll look at all that in extreme detail. 
when capture occurs. It says in radiative capture, the incident neutron enters the target nucleus, forming a new compound nucleus. It would then decay away by gamma emission. So essentially, radiative capture. If I had xenon and a neutron came here, Xenon has a very high target area for the absorption of slow neutrons. So then Xenon would just increase, it would capture it and increase its mass number by one. That's radiative capture. We're going to look at some other things. So the neutron is gone forever. The Xenon gobbled it up. However, fission, a neutron is absorbed by a target nucleus. And in this case, I'll put uranium. The neutron is absorbed. And the actual uranium atom splits apart. Splits into two or three fission fragments. I no longer have uranium. These fission fragments, they could be iodine, they could be xenon, strontium, rubidium. They can be all kinds of things. And we're going to look at a graph that will predict essentially the probability of each one of these isotopes being created in these two fission fragments. But this is fission. Fission. And we can increase the probability of fission occurring if we can increase the microscopic cross-sectional area for fission. And the way we're going to do that is by slowing down our neutron, increasing the target area. All right.